It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. The Lizzie Bennet Diaries is a vlog-style adaptation of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice told from the perspective of Lizzie Bennet vlogging. My name is Lizzie Bennet and William Darcy does not like me. The web has opened up a whole new avenue of storytelling. The Lizzie Bennet Diaries is entirely based on the format of YouTube. So it's pretty much destiny. It harnesses a kind of other power. It has this interactiveness built into it, and it's a really exciting thing for the entertainment industry. And feel free to play along at home if you know the answer. A little Jane Austen and, you know, a little quirky, funny humor. Oh, and Darcy. And a little washboard abs. You should probably take that off. Yeah. Kind of magic little recipes, and there you go, there's the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. Who knows, maybe this is just meant to be. The show's been on for eight months now. It's crazy to think about how far we've come. This is how it started. It's not like we're all gonna put our lives on hold because some rich single guy dropped from the sky. One of the most prominent aspects of the plot of Pride and Prejudice for many people is the love story between Lizzie and Darcy. I came here to see you. But one of the things that makes the Lizzie Bennet Diaries really unique is how much we have focused on the friendship that Lizzie has with her best friend Charlotte. Charlotte and I have been friends basically since we were fetuses. And the relationships with her sisters Jane and Lydia. My sister Lydia is not a slut. Happy? Yes. It's also interactive, it crosses platforms into social media. Just a really fun project and a very innovative version of Pride Prejudice. It's a work of fiction adapted into a video blog. It's much, much different than anything I've ever done. My co-creator partner in this, Hank Green, is a very big vlogger. I mean, he has a channel called The Vlog Brothers. I wanted something that was very dialogue-based and very character-based so that we could do it not as a big production. Hank's had this idea for a really long time and we had been talking to his wife, Catherine, and Catherine's favorite book is Pride and Prejudice. Because, you know, it's the best story of all time. He knew he could call on me to produce it. I was already working in entertainment, but I went, yes, yes, I will start over because I, I was so fascinated with that digital format. But he was looking for that last piece, which was the creative voice that could take Lizzie Bennet and bring her to a modern audience. We have to figure out how to break it up and how to write it and how to transfer it into the present day, making a story. He was at a YouTube event, ran into Bernie Sue. It became this kind of, you know, firing of, of creative juices in my mind of like, oh, like, wait, so we could do it like this, we could do it like this, and like, all right, well, if you're in, I'm in. And we went ahead and and um, started developing. You have to have actors and like sound guy and production people and writers and organizing all these people. You know, we really meant it. It's like, all right, let's really look at every line of dialogue and see if this really makes sense. Darcy doesn't like anything except himself and wearing scarves in the middle of summer. We really wanted to have great characters and great cast because there was a kind of this pressure of doing Pride and Prejudice. We have these truly iconic characters, especially for women, that they have to live up to. The first role we cast where it was just like, okay, it has to be her, was Lydia, Mary-Kate Wiles. <laughs> what? She blew us away with our audition. Gentlemen are an endangered species, and if we aren't careful, they'll go the way of mixtapes. I knew Ashley from the get-go was gonna be professional and wonderful, and I think she even wrote a little note when, when she sent in her submission that she was a Jane Austen fan. And I could see she had a lot of theater background. So both those things, I was like, this girl's gonna be great, and then she was. I really loved the take on the character and I felt like that was something that I really related to, that she was snarky and sarcastic in ways. I'm thrilled you've met an awesome someone. And fun and quirky, and I thought that really fit the way that I would adapt Elizabeth Bennet to Modern Times as well. You promised you would keep this civil. I am always civil. Laura Spencer. She walked in the door with her milkmaid braids, and I just went, that's Jane Bennett. And then Charlotte, Julia Cho, she brought this comedic energy. Why didn't you tell me? I just did. We were just like, that's perfect. My name is Lizzie Bennett, and this is my life. The show first aired on April 9, 2012. The team was like, I don't know, this is an experiment. Let's just have fun. It's entirely possible that it just will not be a good way to tell a story. And I hope that that's not the case. I don't feel like that's the case. I really had no idea if anyone was gonna watch it. We made those first eight episodes and we were figuring a lot of things out. People were like, well, how did it go? I'm like, I don't know what's gonna happen. So when people started commenting on it, I was glued to YouTube and it was 
insane. People loved it immediately. And all the comments were so positive. I was really prepared for the internet to hate me. My uncertain future. I kept saying that all the comments are just gonna be like, shut your ugly dump truck face. And none of them were like that. In that first week, we were getting attention from major publications of Time and Newsweek and Wired. It was amazing. Amazing for you, maybe. We had to stop for Xanax on the way home. People who loved the book were loving the show because they were having fun seeing the adaptation, and then young people were loving the show because they were relating to these young women living their lives and figuring things out. That doesn't mean that my Mr. Right is gonna fall out of the sky so we can double date. I can't believe that this is something that has happened so quickly. Yay! Our show, I think, unlike any other scripted web series, is more like a TV show than anything else. Just go for a take, huh? All right. While other episodes are being edited, episodes are being written, episodes are being rehearsed, episodes are being shot, we have to keep that cycle going. We get scripts to the actors about a week before. Rehearsals for our show is very important. We usually shoot between 50 and 60 pages in a day, so that comes out to about eight to 10 episodes. I get here, you know, at like 7.30 or eight in the morning, and we just bang them out. Call it. I've been here at Pemberley Digital for three weeks now. And this place keeps surprising me. It really is very much a family dynamic when we come in to shoot. We know our parts and we're really happy to see each other and work with each other. <laughs> Today we're going to move the camera. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> it's like you're working with some of your best friends, people that you respect, smart people. Uh, Allison, feel free to um, kind of acknowledge the camera More. earlier. Okay. Because you, you were coming here with that purpose. Cool. We do so much in so little time, and it's sort of superhuman. Hey. One of my favorite things about production designing is telling story through objects. One of the things with all web series is that you're working on a tight budget. And that means going to the dollar store, going to thrift shops and whatever, and picking up really cool sort of funky things. Everyone is contributing stuff. We are doing this interview in Lizzie's room. But this is actually my room in thinking about Lizzie. And I was like, you know, she reads all the same books I do. Just to shoot it in my apartment, like I can dress the set. The entire bookcase is filled with Jenny Powell's books and my stuff that I pilfered. Like Lizzie um, is a poor grad student. With a mountain of student loans. And so she's saving her money in her little piggy bank. The whiteboard, when we first were shooting, we would spend quite a bit of time figuring out what should be on the whiteboard every time. We'd talk about it, what, you know, what made sense for the episode, what was really you know, going on in Lizzie's life. You, know, you can't read it at all. Another thing, the framed things behind Lizzie in every episode are actually just framed pieces of fabric. Sort of out of having to tighten your, tighten your belt, you, uh, you come up with some interesting things, and I think that's better. In addition, we actually don't have a wardrobe person. Most of the clothes come from the girls' closets. They have such a good understanding of their characters that we've never been worried about just saying, you know, bring what you think they would wear. Can you help with this tie again? <laughs> Everything that I try to do, Darcy-wise, well, is just kind of simple and geometric, but things that have come back in style. Suspenders have come back in style a little bit as a hipster thing, but they're also kind of a classic thing. It's gotta be that full Windsor. At this point, I own very, very little that has not been on the show. Basically, like, if I wanted to wear something that I haven't worn as Lizzie, I could wear pajamas or a bridesmaid dress. Yeah. Think about your viewers. Don't you want yeah. them to share in the experience? I mean, this is the internet after all. One of the really exciting things about the Lizzie Bennet Diaries is our use of transmedia, and that really means how many different formats uh, and different ways you can reach our characters. Lizzie's on Twitter and she's on Tumblr and Facebook and you know you can see when Bing and Jane started following each other on Twitter. A lot of kind of wonderful bonus content for the fans who choose to engage on that level. And that just became the grand experience as we like to call it rather than just the show. I like our viewers. It's a nice little community. I could never have imagined that we would develop the fan base that we have and that I would hear from such lovely people constantly. It's become a huge part of my daily life now. They talk to Lizzie. They talk to her as if she's real. They've made friends with her. They care about what's gonna happen to her. They are the almighty Lizzie Bennet Diaries fandom and they're extraordinary. Let him know about our three eligible young daughters who are in desperate need of a rich single man. We just did the best we could with our writing with our performances, with our character chemistry. I sometimes have difficulty explaining myself. And almost every day I see online somebody saying, oh, I just found this web series, The Lizzie Bennet Diaries. You guys should totally check it out. It's so great. Like that, as a creator, is 
the most rewarding. Really exciting for me to do something that's, that's so different. And of course, like I don't have time for this, but here I am doing it anyway, because I was just so captured by the idea. And action. From the beginning, we've had the same cinematographer and AD and producers and, and production designer. The whole team is, is so awesome. They're just great people. It's been a, a really fun journey. As we near the end of the book, mostly I just curl up in the fetal position and cry because I don't want it to end. There's things I don't know. I don't know how everything gets adapted as to what might happen after. I also don't know. I know that certain things have been discussed um, as possibilities, but no decisions as far as I know have been made.